This is tape four with Rabbi Abba Braunschweigel, and it's November 26, 1998. Yeah. What arrangements were made for leaving Europe? What arrangements? I don't know the arrangements. All I know is that uh, my parents said we are going... To, oh yes, the, the VP camps were being liquidated after a while. And my parents decided to move into Berlin, to the town itself. So my father, while he was in the DP, he must have known exactly what's happening. He already arranged for a dira for us in Berlin. We moved into a very beautiful dira in Tempelhof. And my father made his own shul in, the, in that apartment. We had a gigantic apartment. The, you know, the Germans believe in what is called Lebensraum. Big spaces. And that, our dira had every room was, I would say, as big as this whole, all the rooms together. Every room was like this. Like in one room we had a piano. I, I took piano lessons in Berlin from a German piano teacher. We had a piano, a ping pong table, a bunch of svarim shank, and sofas. And especially for, to play ping pong, you need space. And I, I learned how to play ping pong very Until today, I still play good ping pong. Yeah, I'm a good ping pong. I used to be in, I used to be in, uh, what you call, in, in t tournaments. Yeah, I and my brothers, all, all three of us, became expert ping pong players. And also, I became a good soccer player. Where did in the you DP play? camps, we played a lot of soccer. That was the most popular sport. In Europe, pop, uh, here it's baseball. In, but I, I did... I'll tell you how I found out about baseball. When I, I found out about it in Berlin. We lived near the airport, and the Americans used it. Anyway, in that dira, we had many rooms, gigantic rooms. My father took one room and made it into a base medrash. And all the Frumayiden davened in that place. There were right away many Frumayiden. That became like a shtibel here. And my father was not a rov. He was a businessman. But it was a Frumayit, and my father was very helpful in bringing people back to Yiddishkeit. You see, because of the war, many religious Yidin became irreligious. They, they, or because of the, they couldn't, they, uh, they couldn't take it. They said, if this could happen, then nothing is. And anyway, it, there was the common expression was less din less dayan, which means there is no uh, justice and there is no judge in the world. It meant they denied, uh, they became atheists. And uh, my father brought many of them back simply by one means. My father didn't preach. He had money. He, he knew some of them, some of them, he knew the parents. He would say, look, I'll give you, I'll lend you $5,000. Go do some business. If you can pay it back, you'll pay it back. If not, it's not. And uh, because of this, we had many guests in our house. We used to have every day. First of all, my father was basically a money trader. And uh, our house became like, uh, it was full of activity. People came in and out that, uh, that the, the German police uh, noticed this. And we again, they had already, we had raids, real good raids. My father had a lot of hiding places for all the dollars and diamonds and the gold coins he had. And also, I think my father was able to bribe one or two of them. Because the Germans, you see, they were poor after the war. Berlin was bombed, and they were trying to rebuild it. And they got a lot of American provisions. That was a time during the, what was it called? The Berlin airlift. The airlift, yeah. I lived in Berlin during that, that time. Now, my father was rich. So during the airlift, they used, the lights used to go out. We elect so they used to have, my father installed his own private electricity, a generator. That was, the, they knew right away he's very rich because to do this in those days. My father was very rich. He was a millionaire, basically, in Germany, uh, in Berlin. And he dealt uh, on a very high orphan. And uh, even we had, a, we had uh, attempted robberies in our house. All because, by Germans, maybe by Eden also. Eden also, they wanted, they knew that my father has money. Anyway, uh, in Berlin, uh, just a second, in Berlin, my father took, uh, I went to public school. My father said, I know why, I went to Volksschule. I, I, I graduated Volksschule in Berlin. And then my father hired a tutor, there was no cheder in Berlin. 
a private tutor to teach me Gemara already. Uh, was in the, uh, and also a survivor taught me Gemara. And uh, in Berlin, I remember at one time, the Rav of Berlin before the war was Rav Munk, a first cousin of my father-in-law later on. And uh, one day, Rabbi Michel Munk, he lived in Borough Park. He made the uh, Camp Munk, it still exists. Uh, he came to visit Berlin and he came to our house. And also, I remember what, who else came. Oh, I forgot that was already in Lodge. In Lodge, I remember Rabbi Leza Silva came to visit us from the Hatzolah. Hatzola. He came as a, dressed as an American general. And they did this for him so he should be able to move freely because he came yet he came right after the war and he came i remember until today he had his pockets were full of dollars he gave out hundreds of dollars to people just like this he came out to have that money he gave a he gave so hanukkah i remember hanukkah because i was the boy that i i was a little boy i lit the hanukkah candles in lodge right after uh, and he gave a big drosha about chizuk for a moon and uh, and uh, everyone respected him, and uh, the whole, the, all the people got together. They made a big uh, gathering, especially on Hanukkah. We, I remember I lit Hanukkah candles. It was a few times in my life I was, <laughs> I lit Hanukkah candles publicly. They used me a few times in the DP camps also. They had a big gathering. I was chosen to light the Hanukkah candles. Uh, and I remember Abdullah Silva. He gave me a clip in the back of here and. He gave me a bracha, I don't know what, and uh, I remember I was very happy then, and uh, and what else, uh, just a second, I know nothing else, there was a suda there. Anyway, in Berlin, Rabbi Moon came, and I remember once, uh, I, I'm almost certain that's what happened, I think Begin, Menachem Begin, at that time he was fighting the British, he was, you know, he was outlawed by them. He came to raise money, he came to my father for money. He, like they had a big uh, like a meeting that they sh my father should raise money for for the cause. My father gave money. He gave, he was very generous. My father was a big bulk stutter. I remember distinctly we had in Berlin already in Lodge. Every day we had guests. We had guests that stayed with us for months. Pesach. We had at least 30, 40 people staying at the seder. And they slept on the floor. We, yes, big, the house was full of people sleeping on the floor. My parents didn't mind. They were they were rich, but they they didn't mind. The, the people did not. They they stayed so long that uh, it was amazing. And he gave everyone money. And this is how many people were came. Back. He also my parents made many shidduchim after the war. Some of them are still alive. They are close to us until today. Two of them live right nearby. Some, one of them even doesn't. I have a shul here. What's the name of your shul? Zichon Yehuda Vechana. My father's Hebrew name was Yehuda. Leib in Hebrew is Yehuda or Aryeh and uh, Yehuda. Anyway, so it's called Zichon Yehuda. But my father, Yehuda is my father, Chana is my mother. It's right over here, 47th Street and 19th Avenue. Uh, it's, uh, so... Uh, one of them davened in, in the shul. As a matter of fact, he became rich here. He even gave me money to build the shul. Yeah, he, was, he became very rich. So we, already in Lodge, we became acquainted. They lived very close by to us. And, and the, we, my parents became like parents to many people. So they made, they, they made shiduchim. One of us, they married up. We, we had little chasanas in our house. When my parents were the Shatchanim, and also they made the chasan. It was always uh, either in lodge in the restaurant, it was Mamish uh, perfect, we had the restaurant, made a small chasan, or in our house later in Berlin, Mamish, we had chuppes. Uh, and uh, many, many people still remember my parents very much. The people from Berlin and from lodge from that period, my father was called Rab Label They called him Rab Label. And he was, he, was a, he was a very good businessman, and he was rich, and he was very, very generous. Anyway, uh, uh, to make it short, and from Berlin, after a while we realized Berlin is not the place to stay. 
and uh, we moved on and we decided to go to America. My parents decided to go to America after we received affidavits from our Khoivim here. Who we sent are, you the affidavits? It was a fa the Schneiders, the Sh Mr. and Mrs. Schneider. Where Mrs. Schneider was a niece of my uh, mother. And she, she and her, her sister, and Mrs. Schneider was the main person, sent us uh, affidavits to come to uh, to come to, uh, to, uh, to to America. Where did you settle? We settled initially in Queens, what is now called Jam in Jamaica. Now it's a bad section. That time was a beautiful section. Where did you initially, we we came Chalmoyd Pesach, 1951, to America, and we lived with them for the Pesach. But they were not from. But they knew they were they were used to be from. They, they made they, they told us that they cashed at the home and they, they had only pay out the products. My my parents didn't really want to eat there anyway, but uh, it it was it was okay. It was uh, they they did they were very nice and uh, they made sure that we have everything we wanted and uh, uh, and then then not we didn't stay too long with them. We eventually moved to the Bronx, where we lived at first in Oakland uh, place right next to Tremont Avenue, opposite the young Israel of Tremont, uh, where Rabbi Paretsky was rabbi. Uh, and uh, my father here, somehow his muzzle went down, he went into business, he lost a lot of money, then he was in the egg business. And my father, f what we did not know was that my father was sick. He also didn't know. And he was slowly mo losing his memory by the time, by the time he came to America. You have to remember he was already an older man at the time. And even though he made a lot of money in America on the stock market, uh, he used to, I remember, he used to play the Chicago, the, commu the commodities. So he used to buy uh, short or long, where there you buy on, uh, what is it margin? called? Margin. On margin. And he didn't pay the margin. He had the money. But we didn't know, we knew this afterwards. He did, had he given in the money that he was supposed to, he would have been a millionaire. But he kept losing all the money because he didn't rem he, We began to realize after a while that he doesn't remember anymore. Anyway, my, what's the chilek? He In America, my, father, my parents didn't have it good. My, my parents were rich, but then they, became, they basically became poor in America. In the Golden the Medina, they became... By then it was Fakir. My father did very good business even during the war and after the war especially, but not in America. Where did uh, you go to school? So I began first, my father sent me first in Queens to the yeshiva of Central Queens. I'm not, I think it still exists. But it, it was under different auspices than, than today. So who was it? Rabbi Charney. Rabbi Charney was, the, was my, he was nice, he, was, he tried to be me. Uh, but I didn't stay, I, I, it was not my, my parents' type of yeshiva. It was a modern orthodox yeshiva. I didn't know yet what it means, but anyway, I, but I realized right away there were boys and girls together. So anyway, after a short, oh, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you what happened. The first, my first experience in America was, as I got off, we got off the boat, we were on the boat on Pesach. It was General Bl Blanchard, I think, the, the ship. Anyway, uh, my father, I ended up in the Lubavitcher Yeshiva. I think I was on Bedford Avenue at that time. I know, someplace in Brooklyn. And I didn't know anything, but I knew one thing. I had to run away from there. I did not like it there. They taught me things that I didn't understand. I now know what they taught me. They, th they taught me Tanya. I didn't even know how to learn Gemara. They taught me Tanya. Anyway, I couldn't take it there. They were very from and very strict. And they wanted us to go to the mikveh every morning. And uh, I got to Misa. I literally ran away after three days. Somehow I made it back to Queens. And uh, then my father sent me to that yeshiva for a short while in Queens. But I told my father I don't like it there. So eventually he sent me to Torah Vedas. So I, I went through Masif to Torah Vedas. And after Masif to Torah Vedas, I went to, to Yitzhak al -Khanan. By that time, yeah, we lived in the Bronx, the same address. We, yeah, we lived in the Bronx, and uh, after after Torah Vedas, I went to Rav Yitzchak Al Khanan, and uh, I learned very well in Yeshiva Rav Yitzchak Al Khanan. 
and I, I, uh, most of my learning was done under Rav Soloveitchik. Did you get smicha from him? Yeah, I have smicha from Rav Soloveitchik. Uh, from the yeshiva itself, from the yeshiva's Rabbi Tzikromat. I also have a private smicha from Rabbi Yashibar. Besides the yeshiva smicha, he gave me a private smicha of, of Yoyre, Yoyre, Yodin, Yodin. Uh, and uh, I was very close to him for, I, I learned under him for 10 years, uh, more than 10. Because I attended the Shia even after I began teaching. I began, I got smicha in nine, I graduated college in 1959. And in 1961 I got smicha and I right away taught already. Even in my last year of smicha I already began teaching. I right away began teaching in YU. And uh, I have been there since. Uh, I also, I have a master's in Jewish history from Bernard Rebel Graduate School. And uh, and I have, I'm, I'm one of the Rosh Yeshivas and Yeshivas Rabbeinu Yitzhak al -Khanet. I teach all the students. Uh, the average student in my class is about 20, 21. I have boys who are 22, 23. I have all, but it averages out to about 21. I have smicha students in my class. I have all kinds. And I have, Baruch Hashem, a very large class. I have about, for the last few years, since Rav Salavechik passed away, about 100 students in my class. They are also on a high level. And, uh, and uh, I, I have been teaching basically since 1960. I'm now entering my 40th year of teaching. At the end of this year, yeah, this is, I'm finishing 39 years of teaching. When did you get married? Well, my first marriage was in 19, wait, 65, yeah, 65. Who did you marry? I married uh, Miriam Munch. She was the daughter of uh, uh, Rabbi Eli Munch. He was the Rav in Paris. And uh, we had four children together. And uh, the last years of she had cancer and she, she died in 1994. How did you meet her? Oh, oh, oh that is, well, that'll take, too, what time is it? It'll take too long to tell you. It, there's a whole story how I met at the, uh, our Shatchan was a, a subway conductor, a guy. What, ha, to make it short, it was this. My, my, uh, wi my first wife had, uh, she had, anyway, Miriam had a friend, the Enik of Rav, uh, Ella Lapian, Ella Lapian. She had a job in Far Rockaway in teaching. She used to take the subway and always took the, she stayed in the, in the car of the conductor. So after a while the conductor became friendly with her and he began asking her uh, if she wants to get married. So she got scared. Anyway, he told her, he right away, no, 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 I mean, I, I, I'll get you a good religious, uh, she, she told him she's religious. She, and she vadreed him a cup, mamish. And one day she, he came and told her, look, I met this rabbi. And he told me, if you call up this number and you ask for this rabbi, it was Rabbi Rivlin, he has a shidduch for you. He has a, anyway, she, okay, she took it, but he kept asking every day, did you call? <laughs> Until she had to get rid of him, she called. So the shatchan, Rabbi Rivlin, was in Torah with us. He knew me. He gave him my name. But she, she and my boss and Miriam, they both studied in Gateshead. It was Miriam's uncle and aunt, they founded the Gateshead Seminary. Mr. Cohen was an uncle of mine. And uh, so, uh, anyway, to make it short, she, she did not want to go out with, with the YU guy. So she told her friend, she told Rabbi Rivlin that she has a friend more, a little bit more modern. Um, anyway, they, they, she was, my wife was not modern at all. But anyway, compared to the Lopians, the monks were considered modern. Uh, anyway, so somehow Rabbi Rivlin eventually contacted me and contacted, anyway, my, and that's, uh, that's how the Shidduch, uh, that's, uh, that's the, the short version of the story. We invited him to our we wedding, but he couldn't come because it was a shift. He couldn't come to the wedding. We sent him a gift. Uh, Did you ever see him again? No, I never saw. I never met him. You never met him. No, only only Lapian, 
Lopian married to Shapiro, I think. They live in Flatbush. And I, I, have no, I have no contact with them. What are your children's names? My children's name is Esther, is my oldest. Then comes Chaim. Then comes Rafael, then Svidal. They are all married. Uh, Esther married uh, Rabbi Akiva Wiener, who is a Rosh Yeshiva in Sharei Torah in Queens. And my daughter Esther teaches in, in the Beis Yankov in Kew Gardens. They live in Kew Gardens, and that's where the Sharei Torah is. They live, both live next to where they teach. And they have six children. And my son Chaim is next. He married Sarah, uh, 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 just a second. Uh, why do I forget? <laughs> uh, just a second. Uh, uh, what's his name? Rabbi. All my, all, all my mechutan uh, Just a second. Uh, I, why do I forget his name? I should be ashamed of myself. I used to have such a good memory for names. Uh, I forget. Just a second. Uh, he's the editor of the uh, Jewish Observer from the Agudas Yisrael. Uh, Wolpin, Rabbi Wolpin. Rabbi Nissen Wolpin is my mechutin. And you get the Jewish Observer, you'll see Rabbi Nissen Wolpin. He's my mechutin. And they have uh, five children. And then my son, Rafael, married the daughter of Rabbi of Dain Brody. He's a known Rav here in Borough Park. He has a very big uh, base medrash here. And they, he, now Rafael lives in Lakewood. He learns in the Colonel of Lakewood now. And my youngest son, Tzvido, married last year, the daughter of Rabbi, uh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> That's really amazing how I, these names are not anymore in my, I mean, I just met them uh, again. We, they had a baby just recently. They had a baby girl a year after the marriage. Uh, first, Rabbi Shmuel first is a known Rav in Chicago. Uh, and they have one, Rafael, I'm sorry, Rafael has four children, four boys. The last boy was born uh, uh, after Sukkis. And, uh, no, not, no, no, before Sukkis. And uh, so the Gittel, she gave birth after Sukkis to, uh, only a few weeks ago she gave birth to uh, to a baby girl. Have the students in YU ever questioned you about what had happened? Yeah, I once, world? actually now I remember, once in YU I spent the Shabbos in YU, where I went, where I went over my whole history, my, my experiences in the camp, uh, except it was on Shabbos, so it wasn't recorded. And they also, I also discussed there like, uh, not the facts, but uh, what the meaning of it and so on, uh, what we should learn from it and such such things. And I always, I'll, 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 let me tell you this, I, one of my main things I always say is, the main lesson of the Holocaust to me, besides the suffering, is uh, that we should not, we should be, that we respect uh, Western civilization and secular education too much because the Germans were the most educated and cultured people in the whole world. And they were responsible for all this. Uh, so we should learn from this that being cultured and being educated, uh, you could be a murderer and, and, and use all your knowledge, all your science to destroy in the most vicious ways a whole, com a whole people. Anyway, I, so I spent, uh, actually it took me longer than with you, I don't know why. I must have left out quite a lot. Uh, what time is it now? It's about six o'clock. What? About six. Okay. About six. It's six? Uh -huh. And uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, <coughs> I have never told my, my children have never heard what I just said. Did they ever question you? Not question, they were interested, but uh, they see, they saw I don't speak about it, so they left, they, my children are very idle children, they don't, they don't ask, but, uh, yeah. uh, Do you ever have dreams or nightmares about it? I don't, no, no more, no, I don't even remember if I had, the Emma says my two brothers, especially Yosl, he suffered the most, he is a few years older, see, I, I was so young that it, it didn't like sink in too much. But Yosl went through much more than I. First of all, he was also in Buchenwald in Tresenstadt, and he suffered more, and he, it made them more, 
he was very nervous uh, most of his life. And my brother Sal also, he, he, he's, he's, the, he's, all, he's much older than I am. How much older is he? I don't know, the, I, I don't know, the, uh, but he's older, he remembers much more. He also has a very good memory. But he was interviewed for the Shoah in Queens. He lives in Queens. Is there a single memory from your experiences that haunts you? That haunts me? No, I cannot say. I cannot say that any specific experience haunts me. I do remember, I do remember my, my like, I remember playing in, in Demblin in the camp. I played in the summer. I remember that we suffered a lot from the, it was hot, and from the, from the bugs and fleas and this. And we were bitten. We used to sleep outside. We couldn't go inside. We used to sleep in the sand. Uh, I remember dogs, cats, uh, and uh, I. Well, I remember playing with with the other children, and uh, I, I I mentioned before thirty children from our camp made it, survived. And uh, me now, some of them. We were friends until much later, and by now I don't... He, every once in a while I meet someone. Do you have a question, Hashem? I know, I'm, I'm no, I know, I know. I never had this experience, no. I never questioned, no. I bow Hashem, I, am, I believe in, I'm imam in Bermuda Shalem. I have no questions, I have no tightness, I have... Do you ever see any nisim? Yeah, my, 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 my life is in this. I, the, my, I, I only live because of the Rebbe Nishlam wanted me to live, nothing else. My whole existence is, in, and now I'm basically involved in, I'm a Rav and I'm a Rosh Yeshiva. And I'm a, I, have, I have thousands of Talmidim by now. Just last night, I was, I'm a Sada Kedushin very often by my Talmidim. Last night I was at a wedding. Next week I'll be at another one, and the following week is another one. I I have Baruch Hashem a wonderful life uh, now, a, a very true religious Jewish life. Could you tell us about your second wife? What's her name? Her maiden name is Sherishevsky. She was born in America in Borough Park, and she had a regular Bishank of education in, in Rabbi what's his name. Uh, Rabbi Kaplan Spesyankov, she went through seminary and, uh, and then she married and she lived in, first in Belgium in Antwerpen for a short while and then in Israel for 30 years. And then in the second marriage she married me and her father was, an, was a very hush of in the from the Mir. He used to dub in the Mira Minion here. He was like the head of the Mira here. He was a very big Talmud Chochem, a Bal Musa. And... Uh, she has, uh, well, she has, a, well, she never had a lot of, son. she has one brother who has been, who had a very terrible car accident, Yudi, and he has been, like, a, he is uh, paralyzed, he is in the bed, he's still at home, so he, for t so 26 years. Yeah, but that, that's, uh, ba that's basically it. What's her first name? Nechama. Do you have any advice for your children and grandchildren? About what? I have advice. I give them advice about educating children or raise or what they should do with their lives. Yes, I do. That's what, what did I don't think it's well, like. What are you asking me for? Who's How they should the uh, avoid of going life? to concentration camp? There's no answer for this. If if Chas Shalom, I don't think it's going to happen again. But uh, there's n nothing you can do. With the, who knows what the future? We hope for Mashiach's coming. Is there a message for the world? Yeah, the basic message is to, what I said earlier, is to learn what not to do, to learn. Number one, I always feel that the world has not really learned the lesson of the soul. I don't like the term Holocaust. Because many, today every tragedy is called a Holocaust. And people today equate what happened to us, what, what's happening in Yugoslavia, and in, the, in Russia, and this, on Poland, it's true, these are all tragedies, but the, the chilek is very posh. The chilek is, there was, we, were, we were pointed out, we were taken away from our home. We didn't, we didn't start up with anyone. They, they invaded Poland for what? For us. We didn't, want, we, they, we, no, no, we didn't bother anyone. And then they killed us in the most atrocious ways. That never happened. That's, it's impossible. Anyone who compares the, 
what happened to us with the Germans, to any other tragedy, is doing an injustice to us. That, that's why I do not even like the term Holocaust. 